السيدات والسادة مساء الخير وأهلا بكم في معرض 421 يسعدني أن أرى هذا الإقبال الكبير على الحضور والمشاركة اليوم وأود أن أشكر لكم انضمامكم إلينا في هذه الأمسية التي لا شك أنها ستنال إعجابكم تقام جلسة الحوار هذا المساء تحت عنوان فن الدبلوماسية الثقافية ويقصد بالدبلوماسية الثقافية تبادل الأفكار والمعلومات والفن واللغة وجوانب أخرى ثقافية بين الأمم والشعوب بهدف بناء درجة عالية من التفاهم المتبادل بينهم ولدى دولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة تاريخ طويل وعريق في الدبلوماسية الثقافية فهو المنهج الذي أبدعه وسار عليه الشيخ زايد طيب الله ثراه خلال زياراته المتكررة لدول العالم بهدف تعزيز علاقة دولتنا على الصعيد الدولي ويمكنكم الاطلاع على نموذج رائع للدبلوماسية الثقافية متمثلا بالمعرض الحالي الذي يستضيفه معرض 421 تحت عنوان إعادة سرد حيث يسلط المعرض الضوء على أهمية الجناح الوطني للإمارات العربية المتحدة في بيانال البندقية أحد أبرز المنظمات الثقافية على مستوى العالم وقبل البدء أود أن تهز الفرصة لأرحب بضيوفنا في جلسة الحوار هذا المساء معالي نور الكعبي وزيرة الثقافة وتنمية المجتمع المعروفة بدورها الرئيسي في رسم شكل الحوار الثقافي لدولة الإمارات وهي إحدى أبرز الشخصيات النسائية الملهمة والمؤثرة على مستوى المنتخب ومعالي زكي نسيبة وزير الدولة الذي يحضر معنا اليوم يشاركنا خبرته ومعرفته في المجال الثقافي والتعليمي ويسرد لنا بعض القصص المستمدة من علاقته القريبة بالشيخ زايد بن سلطان آل نهيان طيب الله ترى الذي يعتبره الكثيرون الدبلوماسي الأول في تاريخ الدولة وأخيرا وليس آخرا الكاتب والمعلق مشعل القرقاوي الذي سيدير الحوار في هذه الأمسية أود إعلامكم بأن حديثنا الليلة سيكون باللغة الإنجليزية أجلة الترجمة الفورية متوفرة في الخلف Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome. My name is Faisal Al-Hassan and I'm the manager of Warehouse for Two. It is great to see many of you here tonight and would like to thank you for joining us for what is sure to be an engaging and insightful discussion. Tonight's conversation will focus on the art of cultural diplomacy. Cultural diplomacy can be defined as the exchange of ideas, art, languages and other aspects of culture between nations and their people with the goal of fostering mutual understanding. Art in particular plays a crucial role in these exchanges and it has, uh, as it has the ability to transcend languages. Essentially, art allows us, to use, uh, allows us to communicate concepts beyond words. The UAE has a long and distinguished history in cultural diplomacy, an approach which was pioneered by the late Sheikh Zayed during, during his frequent visits overseas to enhance relations around the world. As we know, our nation has benefited greatly from his efforts and continues to do so. You can find a wonderful example of UAE's cultural diplomacy efforts in our current exhibition, Untold Stories, Retold. The exhibition highlights the importance of our national pavilion at the Venice Biennale, one of the world's foremost cultural platforms and the, valu and the valuable role it plays in enriching international dialogue. Before I begin, I would like to take a moment to introduce our distinguished guests for this evening's panel. As Minister of Culture and Knowledge Development, Her Excellency Noura al kabi plays a central role in shaping the UAE's cultural dialogue and is one of the most influential and inspirational women in the region. His Excellency Zaki Nusebe, Minister of State, is here to share his vast experience and knowledge in the, in, in the cultural and educational domains, together with great insight from his close friendship with, with, with the man who many of us consider uh, uh, to be the ultimate diplomat, His Highness, late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan al Nahyan. Finally, our moderator for this evening is renowned writer and commentator, Mishal al Girgawi. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our esteemed panel. Good evening, everybody. Um, before I start, I just want to indulge me the following. I'm very, very, very happy that I'm moderating this talk <laughs> for a number of reasons. First of all, I'm from Dubai. When I got involved in the art scene about 11 years ago or 12 years ago, these were my two friends from Abu Dhabi who were involved in the arts. They are also my two favorite ministers. 
And I'm really putting myself out on the limb because I have family who are in the Middle East. But these really are my two favorite people in Abu Dhabi. They have been uh, witnesses. They are people who have been uh, very, very humble about what they've done and their contribution. Um, and I have, um, I cannot say I've known you before you were known, because you've been known a long time. But at least uh, uh, with Noura, um, we, we were friends before all of this we're came to friends. be. <laughs> yes, and we still are friends, absolutely. Um, so this is really a treat, because just a conversation with one of those two would be such a treat tonight. But to have them together in conversation like this, in such a relaxed environment, away from things, is really, really something that I think uh, you will take away with you for a long time. Before we came on, I said, so what is protocol? What do I say? Do you want, if I keep saying your excellencies, you're gonna keep both responding to me, you're not gonna know. And they're like, just call us Zeki and Nora. So really, this is an evening with Zeki and Nora, and I really hope you take from it as much as I hope that you will find. So, without further ado, we start at the beginning. Um, but just a little bit of context before we start. Really, why are we here? What are we doing? It's very nice to sit down with Zeki and Nora, but why today and what's happening? So the origin of this talk uh, is the exhibition of the UAE's, excuse me as I move through my notes, uh, is the exhibition of the UAE's two Venice exhibitions, bringing them back here. They are on show at the warehouse under the title of Untold Stories Retold. And they are specifically the 2016 Transformations, the Emirati National House, curated by Yasser al shishtawi and presented at the 15th International Architecture Biennale. And they are also 2017, Rock, Paper, Scissors, Positions and Play, curated by Hamad Nasser and presented at the 57th International Art Exhibition. And this is part of the warehouse's public programming, among others, conversations, workshops, film screenings that respond or touch on current exhibitions. Not everybody has the pleasure or the convenience or the ability to make it to Venice and see what the UAE is presenting. And the warehouse thought that, let's bring this home and let's have a conversation on the ground and engage the audience. And finally, Cultural diplomacy is an important part of the story of the UAE's participation in Venice, so here we are today talking to you about cultural diplomacy. And of course, we cannot talk about cultural diplomacy before we go to the beginning. And really, Zaki, we have to begin with Sheikh Zayed. I doubt that you called it cultural diplomacy in the 60s, but it definitely felt like that. Tell me how this was really at the core of the founding of the UAE and its conduct of its foreign policy and its relations. Sheikh Zayed, as you know, was a truly unique leader, exceptional in the way he looked at the world around him and exceptional in the vision he had for the development of his country, exceptional in the way he decided to stand against the waves of time in those days uh, and create a new destiny for his nation out of a very troubled background. So let us go back. I mean, I like the uh, description that uh, was given to him as our first diplomat, our first cultural diplomat. The journey that the UAE embarked upon in 1971 was again a very exceptional one because uh, it was a journey that started in the midst of turmoil in the region at a time when no political or observer or commentator or diplomat at the time uh, thought that the Emirates could survive the 70s, the harsh 70s, the Middle East itself a melting pot, the Gulf region in turmoil, the British government having decided to withdraw abruptly its security umbrella uh, from a region in which the Emirates were disparate and separate in which the Emirates did not have a police force, army, and the basic infrastructures of state. And therefore, Sheikh Zayed set out on this unique journey in which he explained to me in one of the first interviews I had formal with him on TV in 1968, is that we are to build a federation, we are to bring prosperity and security to our people, and we have to have this unique voyage in which we retain our ancient heritage and traditions as an Arab, Gulf, Muslim nation that embrace also culturally the world. How did he do it? Of course, he needed to set out first 
by, in, by putting into place the basic infrastructures of state, of society, of politics, of economics. I mean, roads needed to be built, electricity generating uh, machines had to be started. So that was an essential part, and it worked. But how to make the Emirates also secure and prosperous? The goal of any government is to ensure the prosperity and security of its people. It does that through a number of uh, tools at, at its hand. One of them is diplomacy. And Sheikh Zayed was by instinct the cultural dis diplomat uh, of the era. At a time when it was not, as you said, even discussed in terms of cultural diplomacy uh, as a tool of government. Uh, he set out to create a network of friendships and partnerships, concentrically, starting within the Gulf region, and then the Arab world, and then the Muslim world, and then the developed world, and then internationally. A network of these relationships. And he realized that you cannot create this network of partnerships and friendships by only using petrodollar. I mean, you can buy a product, but you cannot buy friendship. Friendship is something that needs to be based on common values, on a common vision of the world, on a common and shared uh, appreciation of what is required in, to, in order to maintain not only security and prosperity of your own region, but also internationally. And therefore, he set out on a very active foreign policy, meeting heads of state, inviting heads of state, going out to them, he set out, for instance, to Europe. He visited France in 1974. He went out to Africa, to Asia, to everywhere around the world in order to create a network of relationships based on values what that is, can... What, what is your quintessential, me what is your memory of this most powerful quintessential example, the anecdote of cultural diplomacy when you're like, Wow. Let me start. Let me start from the outset. 1969. We did not have roads then, and no. Still, the harbors were not there. The airports, the electricity. Uh, he set out to build a museum in Al Ain. It was an archaeological museum. Why? Because he himself, having led the uh, archaeological delegation of the, the the archaeological missions that came from Denmark was working in the Dilmon in Bahrain. He wanted them to go and see the sites of these communities that lived in the Gulf 5,000 years ago, that traded with the Indus Valley, with Mesopotamia. And he said, we need to show this case this in a museum so that both our people begin to realize and, uh, and understand their own heritage, but also for all those who will come to visit us. Uh, from uh, outside the, the world in order to help us in the development of the country can understand our heritage. So I heard the rumor that there is a piece in this al Museum that's much older than 5,000 years, which is not from Earth. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the museum in al basically is around the civilizations of uh, Umm al-Nar, Hili, uh, Mleha. What you are talking about is much later on, there were also archaeological expeditions in order to look at the prehistoric 70,000 years ago and 80,000 years ago. There is a piece from the moon there, is there not? <laughs> from the moon, absolutely, and that has a story also. Yes, I want that story. <laughs> okay, so the moon, you know, when the first man landed on the moon, the first uh, Armstrong, yeah. We were sitting in, um, in Malaga, in Spain, uh, and we were watching television, and uh, Sheikh Zayed told me, Zaki, translate what they are saying. And I told him, Your Highness, this is in Spanish. You know, I, I know French. <laughs> and he you speak Spanish? Me, no. no. I said, don't worry. <laughs> you speak Spanish? Just, just push yourself, and you will be able to understand. And so I did. I pushed myself, and I got whatever I could pick up, and I translated. And there was somebody from the Manasir, uh, one of the big tribes that, who lived in the Emirates, uh, based ma mainly in the western, in the Liwa uh, area and the oasis, and he told Sheikh Zayed, they are lying, you know, no man is landing on the moon. Uh, this cannot be, because we have seven heavens, and the seven heavens cannot be penetrated. Uh, and Sheikh Zayed said, no, you know, it says in the Quran, 
that God is the creator and through his will everything is possible and so man can achieve anything if God so wills it and the old man said yes this is true uh, and then accepted this is the so way we have one less say, conspiracy theorist in the world thanks to <laughs> <laughs> he brought them to accept the modern world yeah by cultural diplomacy that that stone from the moon in fact came as a result of a visit that Armstrong made to Abu, to Abu Dhabi and visiting Jazeera. But I want to add, so he started from the outset, not only an active diplomacy, but also cultural in that he, diplomacy, in that he built a museum. Uh, he went out, for instance, he, when he went to Geneva in 69, I remember, we brought music from the Gulf to the University of Geneva. In the 70s, when he came to France in 74 and met for the first time, the French uh, president at that time was Pere Regis Kardestan. The idea of the Institut de Mondarab was first brought to his attention. He supported it. Uh, later on, he was to support also the idea of the library in Alexandria, the rebuilding of the library in Alexandria, full canary. And as I said, the basic idea behind it was the three things that were behind it. First, is that you do not, you can buy a product, but you do not buy friendship. Friendship is based on shared values. And two, is that we live in a very troubled world. We are a small country, and therefore we need to establish a network of friendships that respects international conventions and values. These values and conventions and institutions that were created after the Second World War in order to at least ensure prosperity for the community of nations and we as a small nation we stick to this this is why we have adhered to all conventions from unesco onwards and the third was to think that in order to immune his own people from both rapid modernization but also the ideas that were prevalent in the area at that time to inoculate them against them you need to invest in education and culture as two pillars uh, of your uh, development uh, uh, policy. This was Sheikh Zayed's contribution, and I think it's a contribution that is still being followed today by our young and brilliant uh, leaders, cultural leaders today. You just did my job. <laughs> um, I want to come back to you and talk about the last 15 years and really the development of Sadiat Island, which I know you played a key pivotal role in. But let's time travel a little bit and move to the present. You are today our Minister of Culture, my favorite appointment. You know, you talk about people in tech talk about product market fit. I think we can talk about <laughs> minister ministry fit right here. And and uh, I I, I uh, it was the only appointment I've ever tweeted about. Uh, I was very happy with Thank it. You. But tell me, you are front and center our cultural diplomat, regardless of what your title is. You are on a flight later today. You're yeah. going somewhere. I'm going and, and to Milan at uh, quarter to three today, three a.m. Uh, we're going to support uh, ten wonderful Emirati designers uh, participating at the Saloni exhibition. Uh, we're, you know, we're, we're showcasing. It's curated by uh, our artist Khad Shafar. Uh, it's beautiful that there is design, there is uh, culinary, there is um, there is art, there is sculpture, and I believe um, it's a testimony of of how our Emirati designers also progressed in a way that now they're exhibiting uh, you know, outside the borders of even the region, uh, the, the Arab region. It started with uh, Abdel Qadir al-Rayas having his solo exhibition in Kuwait, um, I, I believe in the, in the, in the late 1960s, having Fatma Luta also in, in, in Milan and Verona in 1988. Uh, they went solo, um, Hassan Sharif uh, in Cairo, uh, I believe it's it's it has been. We do ha we did have solo pioneering artists, contemporary artists from the Emirates. Yet now we see how it's progressed in a way that we will we will also witness their beautiful designs in, 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 in Italy. So I'm I'm, I'm 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 thrilled and I'm excited to be joining them tomorrow morning. So you have a slightly different profile than most ministers of culture. You actually was you were in the kitchen. And, um, and you were really like uh, um, involved in not just the exhibition of content, but the creation of content. So you spent a lot of time. You are still uh, 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 responsible for 2454, uh, which among many other great things it does, it has been specifically biased and focused on the creation of content. 
which is something that we know in the region most of the time. People are very happy to sponsor exhibitions, but you know, there's less people who are excited about funding an artist before they go. And you've had that experience. It wasn't just art, it was design, animation, there's a whole host of things. When you think of the creative economies, and that comes into your mind, how do you think the creative economies connect with yourself as an agent and representative of uh, a cultural diplomat of the UAE? How does that feature into your thinking? Well, actually, uh, I mean, uh, the, the 244 experience has been quite um, uh, a time where we, we looked at the region and we looked at why don't we you know, start creating our own content. And, and again, uh, there is content that's being created with... with uh, because we are very great consumers of content uh, we're, in this We're region. wonderful consumers. I mean, you end up your day with watching a wonderful episodes by Netflix or... Or, yeah, or Apple TV, yet again, it's, it's so important to look at what can our people create. Uh, and for us, we know it's, it's going to take time. I mean, creating content is going to take time. You know, art, everything. I mean, this kind of, it's not like you're building a building. It's, it's a talent that progresses and, and takes uh, a local, a regional, and an international uh, kind of platform. So that takes time. The ecosystem around it takes time. So for us, how to build that ecosystem was something that is very exciting at, at 2454 with getting the media partners, the production getting producers and getting international production also to be based here uh, in the UAE and in Abu Dhabi to film blockbusters and that interactions be between our Emirati interns uh, and residents as well with, with certain directors and filmmakers, that by itself is also a kind of a cultural exchange uh, that is in the UAE with global uh, Producers. What if I became a devil's advocate and I said, Noura, we never know and you fund these people and most of their work is mediocre. Why don't we just keep doing events abroad and doing sponsoring airlines and companies? We, you know, the cultural diplomacy wise, you know, we, we'll just sponsor this race or that football team or something else. We should just do more things like that. Why should we fund artists as a return for cultural diplomacy? Yeah, yeah I should be down. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, nothing will win your heart and mind, Michelle like a music, like a song, like a film, like a book, like any form of culture, nothing will win it. Uh, there will be fights, there will be, uh, uh, I mean, weapons, there will be, a tra you know, uh, business transactions, but what will win your heart and mind? Uh, and I feel this is where for us as, as, as also, uh, you know, uh, what Anwar mentioned, it's, it's how Sheikh Zayed looked into the values. And I believe we, we reached a point where we're, we're a nation that capitalized on, on human capital, that intangible human capital uh, that is based on values. And based on those values, what can, those, what can those people create? And what kind of content can present? There are, uh, and where, uh, I thought you speak Spanish, so he, he, he doesn't speak Spanish. Well, I do now. <laughs> <laughs> because of that. So, that. So, so, but, but again, so we're talking about the foreign language that I won't understand. So I won't understand uh, Spanish, such a few words. I won't understand English, but it's, it's, the, it's the form of art or the form of, of, or the form of art that will go and transcend beyond a language. And I think that is why culture is, is really important. And can I interject here, Michal, because please don't undersell our own artists. You know what Noura has mentioned about Abdel Qadir Reyes, who had an amazing exhibition back in the 80s. He is going to have an exhibition soon uh, dedicated to him in the Institut de Monde d'Arabe in Paris as well. You know, the, one of the major misconceptions uh, of the outside world, and, I would, and, and this will come when we discuss about Saudi Air project and others, the idea that art is only West-centric, that art is merely exactly. uh, something that comes from the Western uh, world uh, with capitals, London and Paris and New York and Los Angeles and where you want. And what we are, have seen is that there is a growing realization now that actually art exists also elsewhere. It certainly exists in India, in Iran, in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, and definitely in the Gulf. And a number of research papers have been done, a number of uh, exhibitions here in the center, but elsewhere, that showed that at the New York University, for instance, that showed that uh, cutting edge artists started working in the Emirates back in the 70s, before the oil era. So we do not undersell. 
Okay, this I'm happy to, to you ask you. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, let's, let's go there. Let's talk about the, 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 um, maybe the early 2000s until now and ongoing. I think we still have a lot more projects planned uh, in Saudi Arabia. There was a moment uh, when Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed arrived to a realization and developed a vision that um, culture and education um, uh, are at the heart of Abu Dhabi's uh, 2030 plan and that they were very specific ideas and we were going to work with some of the top institutions around the world to take that forward. Now when you, you were at the forefront of this, you were involved in a lot of the imaginations and discussions and imagining this from scratch and, and conversations endlessly with architects and museum directors and people and, and your, your, your house in Al Ain was, was served as an uh, unofficial uh, embassy for a lot of these people who would came, come and call on you and learn. When you would speak to these people and they would tell you, Zeki, you guys, you know, you have poetry, you have literature, you have drama, but fine arts, not really. How would you converse with them? How would you respond to them on that? Well, uh, inviting them to, to, to your house in LA. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the best step. So for all those who want to visit, they are always welcome. But I think it's important what you said. You know, when Shazai passed away in 2004, in effect, uh, he had already uh, created this state that uh, ex exists with, with where we are living today. And when you go back to the archives in the 70s and read the pessimistic reports that were written about the Emirates and you come to 2004, he left behind undoubtedly a powerhouse, economic and political and a knowledge powerhouse, having invested heavily in culture and education. And as you rightly said, the new leadership, and I consider them as, I mean, call them Iyal Zayed, they are the sons of Sheikh Zayed. Both uh, His Highness, of course, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, and also Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid in Dubai came with this new vision for a new era. We are now into the 21st century, so the challenges that we face are even more existential than the challenges we faced in the 60s. They are uh, serious, and again, in order to ensure the prosperity and safety of our people, we need to invest heavily in culture and education to enable our young generation to face those challenges and in order to establish this network of, re of friendship based on shared values. One of them was, as you mentioned, the development of the Saadiyat project, for instance, amongst many other projects. And the Saadiyat project was conceived from the outset as a cultural hub that can bring together uh, a, a collectivity, if you like, of cultural institutions that are uh, worldwide in their import, uh, that are uh, inclusive and not exclusive, that could speak both to our own people as a component of the educational and cultural development of our society, but can also speak to all the, the outside world who can come and share with us our own experiences. We thought they, that the idea was to develop a number of museums. The first, of course, is the Universal Museum uh, that was developed in partnership with the French government and with uh, uh, the collectivity of French cultural institutions, 17 institutions, including 13 of the, of the major uh, museums, including then after that uh, contemporary uh, transnational uh, museum, a national Sheikh Zayed museum, maritime museum, a performing arts theater. And initially the world looked at this with surprise. Uh, I would, you know, bring an anecdote when we first, I remember I went with uh, Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed to see a museum director in order to discuss the government, it was a government to government approach to tell him that there is this interest in developing this universal museum uh, the director almost shrugged his head and said, you know, shrugged uh, and said, what are you talking about? And the uh, museum in Abu Dhabi, what is that about? And if you remember the polemics that set out in uh, France initially, but also in Germany elsewhere, in New York, I remember, was to say, what is this art in the, in the desert? What does it signify and what is its importance? And yet, gradually, as this project developed all these stakeholders became avid patrons of this project, 
when they came and saw what was happening here, not only as a result of the development of those institutions, but because also they saw what was happening in the, art, on the, in the artistic scene in the Gulf itself, and then in the region. I mean, suddenly they, dis they, they were discovering that art is not something that is Western-centric. It's not something that is only a, a European uh, creative activity. But it is also in the Gulf, in Iran, and elsewhere. As, as you know, contemporary museums and modern museums now in Europe showcase Middle East artists because they realize their importance. So how do you respond to those people by saying that, yes, we have creative uh, also art in our region, and yes, it is important for us, and yes, we share uh, with the rest of the world the same passions, the same interests, the same commitment to create. And this, in effect, is the message of the Louvre Museum in Abu Dhabi. It's a message that tells the world, that goes out to the world, to say, and it's a unique narrative because it has never been tried before. It is to bring the artifacts and, and the creative uh, arts of the different cultures and civilizations that coexisted in the same period, even though distant from each other. And it is to show that this is how civilization, the march of civilization is, and it is something that also we are a major contributor to. This is important that this, these museums are not Western museums implanted in the Gulf, but they are local museums, national museums. We want a universal museum that tells the story of mankind and its march to civilization from a, also from our Gulf perspective. A, a, a transnational contemporary museum that also looks at it with the perspective of our region, music the opera now in uh, Dubai, the various projects that we have here in Abu Dhabi, in Dubai, in Sharjah. I think the whole world now has come to, re to recognize that the Emirates is rich also in, in its cultural uh, pr production, that it is committed and engaged to develop culture as an essential component of sustainable development and that we share together many of those values that should bring us closer together. Well, I mean, you cannot deny that we are at a historic moment. So when the Berlin Wall fell, the, the West contributed 60% of global GDP. Today that number is flipped. It is the non-West that contributes 60% of global GDP. And if you look at the UAE and you get on a plane in four hours, you can be in many, many diverse different cultures very quickly, whether it's East Africa, whether it's a subcontinent, whether it's Central Asia, Southeastern Europe, and if you add a couple more hours, you're in even faster and more diverse cultures. And uh, everybody knows that over 200 nationalities live here, and, and they are people who don't even know each other. And um, maybe um, I once said that if New York is a melting pot, the UAE is a toss salad. You know, <laughs> people don't have to really change. They are able to continue to be who they are. And so in that term, I mean, Maybe you also saw the museums, you saw the development of Sadiyad, maybe from a little bit of a longer distance. Um, do you think that the museums can play a role with all of these people? I mean, we kind of have a very economic relationship with a lot of people that come here, want to have a civilized life, they're fleeing places that maybe people don't stop at red lights as often as they do here, or maybe people don't like to queue as often. And it's really simple things that people want to have as a decent life, and maybe reaching other places is harder. But these cultural relationships, I mean, how did you see this project, you know? I mean, you've seen it, you almost grew up with it. I, I, I feel, I mean, so, so, so today my niece is six years old, so, so she had her first visit to the Louvre Museum in Abu Dhabi, and, 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 and for you to think of that, when I was six years old, I didn't go to the museum yet, it was later on yet. I believe this is a, a, a more important story to, to, to the people of the UAE. Uh, and also the visitors of the UAE and the story of the UAE itself. So yes, I've witnessed the development of, of the Louvre and I, I did work in some of the projects with the Louvre with, with Anwar in, in a way or another. And as he said, and, and um, um, you know, it's, it's, it's how you look at this time capsule that unifies different civilizations, that, uh, that unifies different religions in one room. Uh, and that much thought of it uh, is something that makes it different than anywhere else. Yet for us, it's really important with, with, with education, Michelle. Um, and let's touch, a point, uh, t touch on music. Uh, and I feel this is, a, this is a very dear area in my heart, personally. Uh, and I think we do have the best infrastructure 
uh, when it comes to the Dubai Opera, when it comes to even our centers, our cultural centers. Yet we need to start thinking of kids and how we, we start thinking at having our own national children orchestra. Um, I mean, as you mentioned, I mean, uh, it's, it's uh, during, uh, you know, during the Kennedy's era, there was that, uh, th that jazz traveling around, that voice of America, it was jazz, and it was the music that, uh, that gives people the freedom of, to express, and, uh, and everyone was, you know, was enjoying jazz. Uh, and it was during a time where they believed that even receiving the literature is there is this music, this Navy music. And, and let's look at that kind of official meetup between a president and a president. Um, and look at Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed when he is, he's in the States with his, with his Kandora and Agal and how he says, that's kind of a cultural touch because that is our identity. And that's what makes us different in a way. Um, and we I didn't lose our kimono? Yeah. Sorry? That we didn't lose our kimono. We didn't use our kimono yet. Um, and I feel we, we do upgrade our kimono uh, in a way. <laughs> Women, not men yet, sadly. You're still boring and, it's a bit and tough. Game. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit tough with the men. <laughs> so, so for us, I, I feel that's what identifies us. So, the education element is so important. Our artists, uh, Michelle, uh, I feel our, it's, it's, we do have a, the collab exhibition where we had artists exhibiting in, in Belize. The point is, I mean, having our kids growing up and knowing that they have a university museum is so crucial and important because one day, if, they, if there is an artist, if he wants to be uh, an international artist, he would know what to do. He would know to, to which gallery to talk to. After that, which museum will start talking to that individual. I feel it's, it's more of an enabler uh, of such talent rather than the facade, the beautiful facade that we see in front of us. Well, so I think most people think of cultural diplomacy as something you do when you export to the world. And I think what you're saying is that in addition to that, cultural diplomacy is also a way for the nation to speak to its own people and to send them messages. Absolutely. So in many ways, it's a two-way conversation. It's a two-way conversation. And, and we're not just speaking abroad, we're speaking locally. We're speaking locally. What do you think is the message? I, I, I believe the message, and I, and I feel that we as from the UAE, and we luckily we do have kind of a consistent uh, way of dealing with other countries, with, uh, consistent way how we look into education, progress, uh, you know, uh, inclusiveness, all of that, that is consistent. That happened from day one of the inception of the UAE. We have it, just continuing on it. The message is, um, in 10 years time, uh, or for more, than, more 15 years time, you want to have your music played in, in the in, in big centers, whether it's in the UK or it's in the US, you want to have them traveling with the president. You want to have artists uh, representing their work talking. You don't want to see us officials talking about their work. I, I feel it's, it's for uh, our job is to enable them. Our job is to provide what are the right policies to facilitate that, whether it's in the UAE or outside the UAE. And I think enabling such elements will help pushing the talents outside of the UAE and vice versa, and getting also talents in the UAE. During Dubai Art, there, was the, there were the residents who took place here in Warehouse 41. They were from different countries, from Indonesia, from Saudi, uh, and, and from Europe. They, they experienced the city, you know, and there are other uh, residence programs. There's what, what, uh, what Sharjah Art Foundation does, what Sirkal does, what uh, UAE Unlimited does, Sheikh uh, Zayed bin Sultan. I mean, we have individuals that helps it, we have a government that also supports it, and, 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 and again, at the same time, it's just how can we collaborate and take it to the next level? So, um, maybe, maybe, maybe having this Emirati wave, just you know, like, like the Korean wave uh, one day. Um, so like an image is in 2030, two friends are sitting in um, uh, Santiago de Lima and uh, Santiago de Chile and they are on Spotify and he's telling the other, here's this like song from this... Emirati UAE. or in from the UAE or yeah. Something like that, Something on like that. Spotify. Yes. Yeah? yeah. If there was Spotify. Ooh. <laughs> uh, or Hidalgo incidentally. Classical music. Spotify tends to have only pop. Uh -huh. well, we've, you're not a subscriber, <laughs> clearly. You're just like, I'm out. Um, you have a new mission. Um, I think uh, um, it is specifically about cultural diplomacy. It ends in the UAE Foreign Ministry. Um, 
we are in one of the most, you said, that we are in one of the most difficult eras uh, in uh, the history of the Arab world. I can count three wars, multiple countries that could be viewed as failed states, um, lots of debate about where do we need to go forward, um, lots of political challenges, debates, it's, it's, you know, 25 years ago it was Palestine and coincidentally the Algerian Black Decade. We have geographically learned about places in Libya and Yemen and Syria for all the wrong reasons and the unfortunate reasons that our geographic education has massively increased. How do you think about all of this when you remember the time when the region was, you know, different? Well, I think And what is your mission? And what is my mission? First, yes, I mean, first, I think the region was all, always faced existential threats. So the idea that we are facing new existential threats today, they are different in scale, perhaps, and they're different in geography, geography as you said, but they have always been around us. And part of the DNA of the United Arab Emirates is to survive uh, these challenges and to be able to progress and to be able to carry its message forward. And what is its message? After all, the message is one of peace, of tolerance, of openness, that we are a society that wish to cooperate with the international community, not only for ensuring the prosperity and well-being of our own people, but also those around us. We want to co cooperate with the whole world in order to bring about more prosperity, development, and peace. Sheikh Zayed literally believed that the human race is one family and therefore that we are mandated by the Almighty to work together to bring about the development of uh, all societies, not only our own society. So the message today is particularly important, as you said, because as first for global challenges, I mean, we are facing technological revolution that has never been seen before. Uh, hundreds of millions of jobs are being threatened. We see a wave of populism as a result of the exclusion of certain communities spread throughout the world. We see within the Middle East the disintegration of societies and governments and states. And we see the spreading of uh, extremist and violent and brutal ideologies and interpretations that have kidnapped our own religion uh, in order to spread chaos and havoc around us. My so our mission, our message, in effect, is to inoculate our own people against this extremism, against populism, against living within a bubble, to continue to carry this persistent message that we are part of a human race, that we are one family, hence our involvement in this, this safeguard of, the, for instance, the heritage of mankind, our involvement of, in different conventions, international and regional. Uh, my own mission within the foreign ministry is to work out this cultural and uh, public diplomacy uh, to, a, to a level where to enable uh, our embassies and our diplomats uh, to carry through their, in fact, their missions, which is not only to be diplomats. Gone is the day when an ambassador could sit in a capital and merely have one-to-one -one relationship with a foreign minister or a president. Today, he needs to be actively involved with the people of the country that he is uh, living in. He needs to go out to them. He needs to communicate with them. He needs to be involved, bringing both his own culture to them, but also understanding and in depth their own culture. We within the ministry will act as enablers. Enablers meaning that we need to have the narrative. The narrative is the software, if you like. And the narrative of the UAE is straightforward. A country that is tolerant and peaceful and wishes to contribute to mankind's progress. We need to have the structure. The structure is the hardware. That is to say, we need to create the nucleus within our ministry. We have brilliant young people already developing that, your friends and your friends and people around them in order to create content, uh, whether it is video, websites. So I'm sure you have a lot of ideas that you look at every day. Every Would you day? at least share one specific idea that if you could raise a magic wand, 
you could have executed tomorrow on the cultural diplomacy front? One idea. All of the ideas are being executed. Starting, I mean, you know, we uh, they they have started executing a number of ideas based on a number of continents, eight strategies. I don't want to tell you all the details, but they have they are all happening. <laughs> well, only recently uh, yes. there was in Japan, for instance, the first uh, urban planner in Abu Dhabi was a Japanese. Uh, architect who's American. And he came here for a year, worked with Sheikh Zayed, then he went back to the States, he passed away, and an, an, an exhibition was created around uh, this person, he's dead, but his child, his daughter was invited to come and receive uh, an award and to have an exhibition based on his urban development experience to show a kind of relationship between us and Japan that goes beyond the, the fact we always say it's Abu Dhabi's gas that lights up the streets of Tokyo. This is the kind of public diplomacy that we need to have. And that is the, that is the structure that, the, and, then in the, in, in the, and then you need the tools, of course, the drivers. Yes. You need to address the opinion makers, and you need to go to the uh, different peoples, not only the elites, but in the public uh, arena in order to bring a closer uh, relationship. This is the mission within the UAE. The, uh, the objective in the end, you know, we have, I think, about a thousand diplomats. All of them are, are cultural ambassadors. They can be cultural ambassadors for the Ministry of Culture. We will not create as such the content ourselves. We have all these different stakeholders in the Emirates. You know, the Ministry of Culture, the 421 here, the Foundation, the Art Foundation in Sharjah, the Opera in Dubai, the the local and federal stakeholders, the great galleries uh, everywhere around us. We need to bring the content from these various, uh, coordinate our work with the Ministry of Culture because we are partners in this and uh, co-workers, and then give it out to a network. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has. I think about 300 uh, embassies and consulates and abroad. So these are the platforms where we can start working. We're going to open up to questions. And uh, I just want to ask Nora one last question. Just looking at uh, what uh, Zeki is doing, do you think there is a role to play by the non governmental community? We have a very thriving corporate sector here. We have uh, merchant families of that. Do you think there is a role that they can play in cultural diplomacy that is separate but complementary to what the government is doing? Absolutely, and uh, I, I tend to, I mean, agree with with Anwar in terms of uh, with his mission and our mission. I mean, we can't do it by ourselves. It's, it has to be by you know, we ha it has to be by collaboration. It has to be by working with the private sector, individuals, collectors, um, uh, and again, uh, government is doing its job. Yet it's so important also, our job in the ministry is, uh, because it's the ministry, we do have a number of great individuals who are in the art scene and who did also their work. Uh, I can't not ignore uh, Sultan Saud al Qasimi's job with the Barji Foundation where he traveled to showcase uh, 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 contemporary art, and that by itself, you're having Emiratis showcasing different. And again, with with what uh, Sheikh Ahur did with with Ibrahim Salah. So, so all of those stories. So it's not just about the Emirati uh, uh, artist. It's also about the Arab contemporary artist. That is really important for us to showcase the work. So so going back to um, there are there are great examples. Yet for us, we are going to work on having this. Um, map that will help us to identify who will be our partners from individuals from entities and again at the same time we will check what is missing and who will be able to support us uh, uh, in terms of supporting the creative and cultural sector uh, in a way uh, it's uh, th that work won't be uh, done without the support of the community and the private and other individuals and of course uh, the work that is, has been done with uh, one well in terms of we need everyone in the cultural process. We need everyone. It's, it's, culture is for everyone. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's not exclusive. Uh, so uh, yes, if anyone wants to support, we're, we're, we're ready. <laughs> and we're, we're, we're obliged to support as well. Who has the mic? Uh, I 
All right, uh, first question. There's a gentleman over there. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. أول شيء حاب أشكركم أصحاب المعالي على هالجلسة الطيبة نحن كشباب إماراتيين يعني سعيدين جدا أن نشوفكم وتشوفنا يعني عندي إخواني ما شاء الله يدرسون في مجال الدبلوماسي ومتحمسين يلاقونكم عندي سؤال الله يسلمكم يعني ما دام نحن ما شاء الله في عام مميز عام الشيخ زايد الله يرحمه فنحن عندنا مبادرات وعندنا حماس وطاقات يعني ما شاء الله وايد بلاتفورمز عندنا هنا في الامارات وفرص بس من كثر هل حتى الشاب يتشوش ما يدري يعني اي مؤسسه اللي ما شاء الله فيري تمتنج فتكلمت عن الكالتشر دبلوماسي واحنا مشروعنا الله يسلمكم يخص بالكالتشر دبلوماسي ويخص بالانتركالتشرال دايلوج مع مع العالم فنعمل احنا كشباب هنا شغالين على 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 مشروع مبادرة نقول يعني وتحمل رسائل الحمد لله قدمناها على بعض الجهات بس نبغى نظرتكم انتم لل... لل... خلينا نتكلم بسبيسيك يعني على ال... ال... البابليك ارت اللي هو ميورلز احنا شغالين على مشروع ان نعكس تجارب اشكرك معالي الدكتور زكي انت طرحت نقطة قلت ان احنا في الدي ان اي مالنا الاماراتيين نحب نحكي القصص ونحب نعبر ونحب فنحن يعني الباك جراوند مالنا تقليدي عشنا في بيئه بدويه قصصنا تقليديه فبس ربينا وتطورنا مع الشيخ زايد وقصصه والهامه فسبحان الله وحصلنا الفرصه ان نسافر العالم ونشوف ونفتح لتجارب كثيره فقلنا بالمعرفه هذه والفرصه اللي حصلناها من الدوله بنعكسها في يعني كونتنت معين زين مو بارتست نحن مو بارتست عندنا افكار فلا لا ما رايكم في الفكره افكارنا بشكل عام لان الكالتشر دبلوماسي فيري برود ما شاء الله عليكم اعطيتونا اسمحوا لي هالوقت اعطيتونا ما شاء الله اشكال وانواع للكالتشر دبلوماسي انا وضحت مئات الميورلز اللي هو اربن ارك يا مرحبا يا مرحبا الاخ يا مرحبا يا مرحبا اريد اسال سؤال منكم من كل احد ثاني ارجوك بس تعريف بنفسك وبعدين طرح السؤال لما قلت انتم الشباب ما شاء الله عليكم وربنا يحفظكم ويجزيكم الله خير يعني وبس خبرونا يعني انتم عندكم مقترح وعرضتوه على احد؟ عرضناه يقولون اللي يستقبلون المبادرات مكتب المؤسس صح المكتب المؤسس يعني له علاقه في عام زايد نعم قدمتوا نعم. المبادره لمكتب المؤسس نعم ارسلنا المبادره ردوا عليكم بعده ياخذون وقت الضمير من من اسبوع الى تتابع الموضوع ما يهمك الله يطول عمرك ان شاء الله ان شاء الله معالي الوزيره هي بتتابع الموضوع وسؤال شخصي لك اذا انت بس اعمل اسم يعني خبرها على سهيل سهيل الله يسلمك مشكورين سهيل 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 الراشدي يا مرحبا الله يسلمك يا مرحبا وسؤال لك شخصي اذا يعني الله الهمك يعني الموهبه انك تكون رسام و ترسم رسمه تمثل الكالتشر دبلوماسي شو بتكون يعني الحين مشكورين مشكورين على نعطيك فرصه شوي على الله يسلمك ترسم الرسمه يا مرحبا يا مرحبا اناذر كويشن No, I have to catch a flight, so you guys are being very kind. <laughs> so, I'm talking to someone who's come and just tell me you're talking about the dream. Assalamu alaikum. Najat al Faris from Jarid al Khalij. شكرا جزيلا على هذا الندوه الجميله والامسي الكويس يعني بس كان عندي سؤال او يعني يا ريت يكون في تركيز اكثر على المواهب الشباب اللي تحت يعني بين ال 12 وال 18 المواهب اللي هم الناشئين يا ريت يكون في تركيز من قبل وزاره الثقافه على المواهب، صح في مراكز لكن بدنا اياها اكثر من هيك مش بس بالعطل الرسميه حتى في في ايام الدراسه يعني وشكرا جزيلا. Good evening, it's a pleasure to be here. I draw especially from Dubai. My name is Katja Kovtunovic. I'm an artist, fashion designer, and a journalist. And uh, when I moved to Dubai seven years ago, 
I fell in love with the country, with, I mean, with UAE, with the city, uh, with the kindness of the people, with the openness, with the tolerance to each other, with the safety that we all have here. And I realized that a lot of people abroad don't have this this opinion. They are very hostile. They're very. They have very, very you know, media not very kind to the Middle East sometimes. So I decided that I want to change this and I want to uh, contribute to changing the opinion about the Middle East. Uh, since I'm a fashion designer, I went to explore the local fashion market and I found the, the traditional sofa and uh, majlis fabric. And I decided to say what I want to say about UAE through my work with Sadu to make it global, wow. to make it appreciated worldwide, to make it uh, my hashtag is Sadu goes global. Because I want people to look beyond what uh, what traditions are. Traditions can be very modern. And recently I had a film done about my work by CNN. And when CNN shared my video in their uh, channels, in the US and uh, in, in Europe, I received a lot of criticism. I did not expect it at all. Criticism for cultural appropriation. I was shocked because all my UAE friends, followers, supporters, Everybody is so proud of me, what, what I've done, and they're, and they're thankful for what I've done for the country. So how, where is this fine line between cultural appropriation and culture appreciation? And how, maybe you can give me advice as Emiratis, how to respond to this kind of people who are criticizing me for stealing the culture, appropriating the culture, although I am exp I'm, I'm promoting the culture, I'm changing opinions of people abroad, what UAE is about. No, and, the, and the second question, when we talk about support to artists, do we only include Arab or national artists, or we also include artists for residents? Thank you so much. Can I? Thank you very Please. much. Uh, we appreciate greatly what you have done, and uh, you know the UAE loves the people who live in it. So please sit down. So, so this is why you love it back. So it's, an equal, it's a two-way uh, exchange. Sidhu, as you know, the UAE has already is, is establishing it as part of the heritage of mankind, the material heritage of mankind with the UNESCO. So there is no way for you to have cultural appropriation. Uh, it is, it is uh, something that you can do as an inhabitant, as a resident of the UAE. We would love to see the film that you have made on CNN, so if you could have a copy, we would be very grateful. Uh, and I am sure that you will find that the Emirates welcome not only uh, UAE artists, but also its resident artists. And this is why, in effect, they have always been included in the UAE pavilion if you go and visit. In fact, all of you should go in and visit the pavilions inside the warehouse. Uh, to well, then you can see that how we enjoyed uh, having also the ex expatriate. As the minister said, the UAE welcomes all its artists, national, expatriate, yeah. Yeah. it welcomes all art, as again she said, UAE art and Arab art. Absolutely. The best response is not to stop. Yes. Um, any other questions? There's a gentleman in the back over there. Hello, my name is Jihad Amish, and I have a question. Uh, you know, there are like many Emirati creatives and artists who are working in governmental companies or any companies. And sometimes like to pursue their uh, careers or their dreams in art. So maybe they need like to take uh, time off or yeah, pardon. I know. So is I there like <laughs> any special like uh, pardon or yeah. program? Or it's something that we're working on at the ministry. Uh, it's something that we discussed also uh, at uh, our Future of Culture retreat that happened a few months back. And uh, definitely you're going to have a solution. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's a gentleman in front of him, just right there. Please raise your hand. Yeah, there you go. In relation to the first question that the gentleman just asked, I would like to ask. Uh, please introduce yourself. I'm Ravi, and I work for DCT. So nice to meet you. And um, so my question is, what is the, what I find actually very important is because we are talking about how you want to develop the how you see the UAE and how you want to develop it on the international level with cultural diplomacy. And one thing that is very important is, for example, for um, why is Berlin the way it is, why is New York the way it is, and why does Paris work the way it is. And I think one thing that is very important is, is that it's very accessible for artists to actually move there and to live there. 
So living space for artists here is way too um, expensive. True. They don't have a solution for the visas. So even if you are, and so you need to have a job basically to have a visa. You can of course apply for um, a freelance visa, which is very expensive compared to free to freelance artists who are um, probably just entering right now the international market or the market in general. And um, I think this would need to be a solution. So I wanted to ask you, are you looking into these things as well to make it actually possible to, for Abu Dhabi and the UAE to become a hub the same way that Berlin is or that... Um, Can I just, just to clarify? Yes. There is an artist visa in Berlin or in Paris for... No, but no. you can just uh, go there. Just, and just to understand. There. And if yeah. you are, for example, European, you could just go there, right? Yeah. Or if you are... Even if you're coming from from another country, like I have friends, they are from, for example, from South um, Africa, and then they just um, apply to different kinds of ways where they don't need to have a sponsor who is an actual employer. Okay. So there are um, yeah, ways to just go and to live there. Yeah, yeah, sure. But, uh, but uh, again, uh, we're looking into uh, that in terms of looking at artists. Uh, there are projects that would be happening in the UAE that will provide uh, more affordable uh, um, uh, you know, uh, apartments or, or hotels. It depends in terms of, uh, um, of the program itself for why the artists here in the UAE or in Dubai or Dubai or wherever. Uh, and when it comes to the talents visa, I believe that this is something uh, that is uh, looked into uh, because again, there are freelancers visa, and I understand there. You know, I think the, the the price is different from a place to another, and they're mostly given in, in free zones. Uh, yet again, we do have to have a very much focused uh, uh, strategy when it comes to artists uh, globally. Um, so that's an excellent question. Unless there are other questions. Okay, is, is that a question? Yes. Okay, is that a question? There's a lady over here, and the gentleman over here, and, I, and then the lady <laughs> over here, and we're gonna wrap it up. <laughs> so we're gonna take four questions, and we'll answer them all in bulk in the end. Please go ahead. In the beginning, I know myself, my name is Iman Al-Mughiri. In the beginning, I want to thank you very much for opening up the conversation about cultural diplomacy. As a person, I'm very proud of the culture of diplomacy. But I want to know if I want to pursue it in an academic matter, and I'm going to study it in a way Academic. Where would I uh, yani pursue it in the UAE? And my second question, أنا كشابة من المجتمع, how do I contribute to the قابلة الدبلوماسية على level مجتمعي? Okay. Uh, there was a lady here, or rather, yeah, just over there. Thank you for a very interesting um, discussion this evening. Um, my name is Rohana and I'm from the British Council and we're, we're in the business of cultural relations and we've been doing that for 80 years. Um, one of the things that we've learned um, through our work is the importance of um, sustained engagement and not one-off projects and particularly sustained interaction between artists of different cultures. Because only through that can we learn truly about each other's identity and talent and interest, etc. So my plea is more about, it's not really a question, but it's a plea that with whatever you're planning in terms of culture, and to create opportunities for more sustained engagement and with artists, but also to consider when you are taking work from the UAE, whether it's to the UK or other countries around the world, but to perhaps not take it to the major hubs. Um, whether it's London or Manchester, but to take it further afield, because I know in the UK um, that young people that live outside of London, outside of Manchester, outside of Edinburgh, um, are really keen to learn about other cultures. And I, I feel that's probably the same for the UAE as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Awad Saleh. Um, working in the safeguarding of uh, cultural heritage, uh, UNESCO conventions, and cultural uh, cooperation. Uh, I am uh, happy to be part of this event and happy to listen to what I've been listening to. Uh, we have uh, three speakers. You know, Mashal was the third one. Okay, and uh, thank you all for all what you uh, uh, presented to us, and uh, I just would 
make a conclusion, if you allow me, instead of question, that we could add that the experience of transformation from a desert to a modern state in such four decades is another example of cultural development changing. It is not economic. The experience of this transformation based on the cultural and values of this country. That is one thing. Secondly, I think the audience here give another example how much we are working on cultural diversity. Thank you very much. Thank you. There was one last question somewhere here in the back earlier. I'm sorry, I think we have to wrap up. She has to fly. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it over here? It's, I, I can't remember. There was a hand raised here. If you've changed, okay. Uh, I'm sorry to be the last person. Uh, my name is Fatima Naimi, and my question is directed to Inor al Kabi. I was wondering whether the ministry has plans to collaborate with the Ministry of Education to introduce formal art education. Because growing up, I had art practice, but not art education through history yeah, or whatnot. I know. So, I was just wondering. Thank you. So let's start with the last question. Yeah, I think because it's, it's linked to... And then to the cultural diplomacy. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want me to answer that? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. So uh, we are collaborating with the Ministry of Education in terms of introducing uh, proper uh, um, arts and music um, uh, education in partnership with proper institutes. Um, I understand that the, our centers used to provide some lessons, and you can't... Um, call a two weeks piano lesson a lesson. Uh, there has to be a, a, a proper program that also enables the students in public schools uh, uh, to pursue if they want to. I mean, it's again, it's, it has to be there, but again, there will be some, some students or some kids who would like to pursue further uh, kind of a, a, of, a, of a music future in, in terms of when it comes to that. Uh, we're, we're going to, uh, we are working on it currently. We just want to identify who will be our partners. There will be the age groups, there will be, the, okay, okay, the schools as well. And as, as I mentioned uh, uh, during my talk, that we're going to work on having our National Children Orchestra of the UAE soon. Well, Iman's question on cultural diplomacy and how to study it properly. The cultural diplomacy is still part now of international relations, so studied in different uh, universities under international relationships. But there is the uh, diplomatic academy, uh, the Emirates Diplomatic Academy, which in, uh, in, in the main uh, is there in order to train our young diplomats, but is also open for courses. And one of the courses that it is giving and it will be developing even further uh, will be a course on cultural and diplomatic and, and public diplomacy. Uh, with also certain courses given on art appreciation, the UAE art, as well as the Gulf art and art in the, in the modern world. So keep, or we could have said, "Kalam in Arabic," and we will be in the academy of diplomacy. And it is possible to follow it on the path of the academy of diplomacy. And it will be seen in the future, in the future, in the future. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please join me. Thank you very much for your time. Please join me in giving a hand to my